Coming up on Bear Zone, women's volleyball soars past Eastern Washington. Also, the football team went to Arizona in search of another Big Sky win. We also have an update on the Broncos and the Rockies. We've got all that and more this week on Bear Zone. Don't go anywhere. It was tight, but UNC's volleyball team got the job done against Eastern Washington with a 3-1 victory Thursday night. The first set opened with the Eagles taking a 3-1 lead, but the Bears responded 7-5. The match stayed close until the Bears pulled ahead 21-18 thanks to kills from freshman duo Taylor Muff and Jaden McCartney. Courtney Lockie rallied the team with two kills along with Emily O'Neill to take the set 26-24. UNC dominated the second and started with a 5-1 run behind a strong service by Taylor Ells. Alex Colon and Riley Haynes had strong performances, giving the Bears a 25-11 win and controlled the match with a 2-0 lead. The Bears had issues in the third and fell behind 15-11, but got kills from Colon, Muff and McCartney to get within one at 17-16. The Eagles jumped ahead with a 22-19 lead, but UNC made a comeback and got within one. But Eastern Washington took the third set 25-22 to force a fourth set. UNC had no intentions of letting the match go to a fifth set, so they got down to business in the deciding fourth set. Clone and O'Neill alternated scoring to push UNC's lead to 10-4. Then Clone and Lockie helped build a sizable 20-11 lead, but the Eagles flew in to cut the Bears' lead to 21-18. But after a kill from Clone and an ace from Muff, the Bears won 25-21. After the win, UNC had a quick turnaround when Idaho came to town on Saturday. UNC had difficulty establishing their momentum Saturday night as they took on the University of Idaho. The Bears kept the score close in the beginning with kills from Courtney Lockie and Alex Klohn. After being tied at 8, Idaho went on a 7-2 run and took a 15-10 lead. The Bears couldn't close the gap, giving the Vandals the set win, 25-20. Idaho opened the second set, tying the score at 7 with both teams exchanging points to keep the set close. Tied up again at 22 and 23, UNC got a kill from Lockie to put the Bears in a position to win the set. But the Vandals had another idea with a kill from Devon Ryder to win the set 26 to 24 on a UNC error. Idaho took a 12-10 lead in the final set, but the Bears responded with blocks from Emily O'Neill and Daisy Schultz to turn the set around. The momentum seemed to change with UNC tying the set at 19, but the Vandals went on their own run to finish the sweep 25-21. The Bears are on the road, but come back October 19th to battle Weber State at 7 p.m. The first true road game wasn't kind to the Bears on Saturday as they dropped their first Big Sky game 48-20 to Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff. NAU completely dominated the first half. UNC's offense was nowhere to be found, while the defense couldn't hold the high-powered Northern Arizona offense. As we've seen through this season, though, you can't ever count the Bears out, and they proved it in the third quarter, storming back to make it 20-14 after a 7-yard run by Trey Reek. But that's when the wheels came off. They gave up 28 points in the second half, capped off by an 85-yard interception return by the Lumberjacks. The road trip isn't over for the Bears. They head to Grand Forks this weekend to play North Dakota. Kickoff is at 1.30 p.m. Saturday. Have you ever wondered what the best activity for team bonding is? Well, how about a seven-hour drive to Lincoln, Nebraska for an ultimate Frisbee tournament? Just ask Bear Zone reporter Austin Sack. He went to Nebraska and tells us how the tournament went. The University of Northern Colorado Upstream spent Saturday, September 30th and October 1st in Lincoln, Nebraska. The Ultimate Frisbee team participated in the annual Children of the Corn Tournament. We got a lot of young people who are, it's their first time kind of playing. We had probably half our team is their first tournament. And so, you know, being able to get out there and really show like a tournament atmosphere to what those players um, and their experience, I heard all around was positive. Upstream face off against multiple schools from around the nation. There were teams from Wisconsin, South Dakota, and several from Nebraska. The team played multiple games per day and fought hard to end the tournament with a record of two wins and four losses. This weekend's about learning, so. Not about results, it's about learning, everybody has a good time, so.
UNC played against teams that had a lot more experience, but they will be able to build off of what they have learned into their upcoming tournaments. I think going forward to our next you know, couple tournaments, I think it's looking really good and hopeful to keep developing all those players and hopefully we can do well. The Bears have two remaining tournaments to look forward to this season. One will be hosted right here in Greeley October 14th, while the other will be in Fort Collins October 21st. So I think competitively we can do well against those teams. You know, I don't think there's really any other of the college teams that were there this weekend that were out of reach for us. It's all about, you know, coming out to practice and developing those skills. And with a young team, it's, it's a little more difficult because not everybody has had that experience with those throws and the wind and whatever else might be thrown at them. But going forward, I think it's a team that can do well. Northern Colorado Upstream hosts a tournament in Greeley Saturday, October 14th. It's an open tournament so anyone can play. Just bring $5 and your game face and you're in. After the break, Abigail has the weather for the soccer game tomorrow night. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm Anderson Cooper. As a parent, you want to make sure that your child knows how to deal with bullying when they see it happening. And chances are they want to help, but they don't really know how. I'll teach them that the best thing to do is calmly walk away, find a teacher or other adult and speak up and do your part. Be that adult they can talk to and trust will listen. Join me to help stop bullying. Go to stopbullying.gov to find out more. You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. Listen, you are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV and I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm going to have to block you. <sighs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're, they're blocked too. Welcome back. I'm meteorologist Abigail Stewart. Taking a look at our weekend forecast, tomorrow looks like there are going to be storms during the day with only a high of 62 degrees. This weekend, though, clear with highs more around 70 degrees. We've got two soccer games this weekend. The first is on Friday at 7 p.m. Looks like it's going to be with most or have mostly cloudy skies with temperatures at around 53 degrees, cooling down to around 40 degrees as the skies clear out for the evening. Although we will have a wind at around 10 to 15 miles an hour, which may seem make the temperature seem a little bit colder than it is. So make sure to pack a jacket for that game. On Sunday, looks like it's going to be a beautiful day for a soccer game. Game starts at noon, where temperatures will be around 62 degrees, finally warming up to that high of 70 degrees by around 2 p.m. Now, we're not going to see this type of weather too often because winter is right around the corner. And since it is so close to winter season, you may be thinking, Wow, I'm just so excited to start trying those winter sports, including skiing and snowboarding. And if you're one of those people thinking that, well, we've got some safety tips before you plan that trip up to the mountains. First safety tip is to know your environment. Wind chill is a big factor, especially in alpine environments. Even at a temperature of zero degrees Fahrenheit, as little as a 15 miles per hour wind will drop the temperature enough to give you frostbite, frostbite within 30 minutes. Sunburn is also an issue if you decide to go skiing. Even if there's cloud cover, you need to wear sunscreen. Also, sun reflects off the snow, which can lead to snow blindness, which is painful and may cause some temporary loss in vision. Also, know the avalanche risks of where you're going before you head out. Rule number two, wear appropriate gear. We suggest multiple light layers for any winter sport. Also, take extra gloves, socks, and a hat just in case the ones you bring get wet. And especially, don't let your clothing get wet because then you'll get be cold and miserable for your trip. Also, make sure that your gear fits to avoid many injuries and make sure to bring sunglasses and goggles to avoid that snow blindness. Um, also note the types of injuries you could get while uh, doing winter sports, including hypothermia. This, the symptoms of this include shivering, lack of coordination, slurring words, and wanting to sleep. And if left untreated, can result in death. So if you or any of your friends start showing these symptoms, seek medical help immediately. Also, we have a risk of frostbite, which is where ice crystals actually block blood flow to your skin, which can 
turn it gray, blue, give it blisters, and make your skin numb, which also needs medical attention right away. Also, you should know that cold muscles are, have less elasticity and thus are prone to injury. Some, muscle, or some parts that are prone to injury from this are knees, shoulders, wrists, and spines. Also, wear that helmet no matter what sport you're doing this winter. Also, know that shivering can lead to low blood sugar and reduce your sport performance. Fourth, bring a friend. Never go into the wilderness alone. A friend can spot an injury such as hypothermia, and then you have a less likelihood of getting lost. And last but not least, know your limits. Bring a snack, drink water, rest, don't push yourself, and don't get too cold. Now that you know some safety trips for that winter ski or snowboarding trip, stay tuned every week to Bear News to learn when, if and when we will see snow here in Greeley. Back to you. All right, give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? To be safe. Don't worry. We'll just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No? Nope. But getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy is a degenerative brain disease found in people with multiple head injuries. Recently, CTE is becoming a household term in both college and professional football. CTE begins when a protein forms in clumps that spread through the brain, killing the cells. Early symptoms of CTE include impulse control problems, aggression, depression, and paranoia. Doctors can find signs of CTE in patients in their late 20s and early 30s, but symptoms worsen as the disease progresses. Some patients suffer memory loss, confusion, impaired judgment, and dementia in their 40s or 50s. While changes in patients' cognition and behavior appear early, doctors can't officially diagnose the disease until performing a brain tissue analysis after a patient's death. More than 100 former NFL players have been diagnosed with CTE, including Jovan Belcher, Junior Seau, Mike Webster, and most recently Aaron Hernandez. Hernandez is one of the youngest to be diagnosed with CTE after committing suicide at the age of 27. Researchers say the damage to his brain was that of a person well into their 60s. These findings raise speculation about the root of his unstable and violent behavior. Shortly after signing a $40 million contract with the New England Patriots in 2013, jurors convicted Hernandez of murdering one of his friends and two others. In late September, Hernandez's estate filed a lawsuit seeking damages to compensate his four-year-old daughter, alleging the NFL knew repeated head injury could lead to brain disease. Back in 2013, the NFL agreed to pay $765 million to settle a similar lawsuit brought by nearly 5,000 players and their families. The threat of CTE encouraged the NFL to make the game safer and caused players like Chris Borland and broadcasters like Ed Cunningham to walk away from the sport. After kneeling in unity last week in Buffalo, the Denver Broncos remained united and stood during the national anthem Sunday against the Oakland Raiders. A disappointing loss to the Bills last week and a return to the mile-high motivated Trevor Simeon to take on the Raiders. Although he got sacked four times, Simeon went 16 for 26 for 155 yards and one touchdown. His lone touchdown was a 22-yard pass to tight end A.J. Derby midway through the first quarter. Kicker Brandon McManus extended Denver's lead to 10-0 to end the first quarter. A 64-yard Derek Carr touchdown pass late in the half brought the Raiders within three. A 36-yard field goal and a 46-yard field goal gave the Broncos a decent cushion heading to the fourth quarter, and they managed to hold on the rest of the way. The Broncos beat the Raiders 16-10 Sunday to push the record to 3-1 on the young season. The Broncos get an extra week to prepare for their Monday night matchup against the New York Giants October 15th. After some tight races to end the season, the MLB postseason is set. 
In the American League, the Boston Red Sox, Cleveland Indians, and Houston Astros clinched their divisions, while the Minnesota Twins and New York Yankees took the wildcard spots. In the National League, the Los Angeles Dodgers, Chicago Cubs, and Washington Nationals clinched their divisions, and the Arizona Diamondbacks and Colorado Rockies took the wild card. The AL Division Series games began this afternoon with Justin Verlander and the Astros hosting Chris Sale and the Red Sox, but postseason action started Tuesday night when the Twins traveled to New York. The Yankees took the game 8-4 to advance to the Division Series. New York travels to Cleveland tonight to take on the Indians. Probable starters include Sonny Gray for the Yankees and Trevor Bauer for the Indians. For the first time in eight years, the Colorado Rockies made into the postseason, clinching the second National League wildcard spot. Last night, the Rockies traveled to Arizona to take on the Diamondbacks in a high-scoring and high-stakes game. John Gray took the mound for his first-ever playoff appearance. In one and one-third innings pitched, Gray gave up seven hits and four runs, including a home run by Paul Goldschmidt. Arizona scored in each of the first three innings and left Colorado scoreless. Down 6-0 in the fourth, the Rockies turned it on, scoring four runs. Both teams were scoreless in the fifth and sixth innings before making it a nail-biter for the final three. Scoring went back and forth with the Rockies even closing the gap to just one run in the eighth. The Rockies couldn't hold on and the Diamondbacks advanced to the division series with an 11-8 victory. Arizona heads to Los Angeles tomorrow to face the Dodgers and we'll have highlights for you next week. Despite the Rockies falling to the Diamondbacks last night, Bears own reporter Sean Waldy asked students if the Rockies would win the World Series prior to the game. I'm Sean Waldy reporting outside of the University Center asking students if they think the Rockies are going to win this year's World Series. Yes, I do. Series? Uh, now I'm rooting for the Red Sox this year. I sure hope so. Why not? Oh, um, I think there's a chance. This year? Absolutely not. Um, I don't know if they'll win the World Series, but I'll definitely root for them. <laughs> no, I'm a Red Sox fan. We're going all the way. Sorry, guys. I don't follow baseball, so sure, yeah. I do think they're going to win. Reporting from outside of the University Center, I'm Sean Waldy, Bear News. The Rockies run may be over, but the baseball season is far from done. I'm excited to see some more baseball, but I am sad that the Rockies ended their season. I'm a little bit sad about the Rockies too, but I think it's going to be a World Series rematch between the Cubs and the Indians. And that is our show for tonight. Be sure to stay up to date on our Twitter and Instagram pages, BearZoneUNCO, and on YouTube, BearNews98. Make sure to like us and to join us every week for BearZone. All sports, all the time for UNC Athletics. Good night.